Okay, so in this tutorial we're going to look at organizing our created class notebook so it's easy to navigate for our students and easy for us to organize it ourselves. So we've got two sections here, collaboration space and content library. Now if you've got students added in, you're also going to have a whole list of students where you can see what work they've done and how to check that work. We're not going to worry about that for this tutorial, we're going to look at that at a later date as well. This one is purely on how to organize our class notebook. Now once you've created your class notebook, you're going to have um, your collaboration space, your content library, and you'll have these different pages here. Okay, So the structure is really important. You have, first off, your sections. So overall you've got your book, then you've got your sections, and then you've got individual pages and groups in these sections here. Okay, First off, we're going to right click and delete the welcome section. Okay, We don't need this one. So these things here, these are called section groups. And in this section groups, you can have different sections. And in the sections, you can have different pages. We're going to actually right click and delete this section here using the collaboration space. Because again, this is just a tutorial, uh, short tutorial here, written tutorial, we don't need that. Okay, So we're going to delete this section here. Are you sure you want to permanently delete? Yes, we're sure we want to permanently delete. So now we have the content library, and again, we're going to delete this section here, so we've got a nice blank notebook. Now we have the collaboration space, and if you click on the drop-down arrow, there's going to be nothing, and same with the content library. The collaboration space is where your students are going to organize and collaborate, maybe do some group work together. And in the content library, that's where we're going to post the main brunt of our content. So in the collaboration space, that's purely up to you on how you want to organize it, okay? So what you can do is you can right-click on the collaboration space and you can uh, create a new section. Now you could do this uh, case by case in terms of group activities, but a section you might want might be a questions and answers section. Okay? And you can have this week by week. So then you can create pages. So again, we've got our book, we've got our section group, and then we've got our section, which is these colors here, and then you've got pages. So in this page here, we might rename this page, and you can right-click on all of these to rename these. We're going to right-click on this page here, and we're going to rename it, or you can just click on the page and rename it here. And we might call this uh, week one, Q and A. So what students can do is they can actually post here and say, uh, hey miss, I have no idea how to calculate a triangle area. And you can actually reply and respond down here. Okay, You can highlight things and respond, etc. You've got all these tools up here. Now when people post this, you can actually hover over the little box and it will give you some initials and tell you who posted that. Again, we'll show that a bit more in a later video on how a full class notebook will look and how to respond to different students and how to actually use these in a classroom. But for now, the collaboration space, you can create different sections. If you're doing a group activity, you can create um, a new section. So you'll always right click on here. You can create a new section. You might do um, poster activity and let's say you're doing group activity where the each uh, each group pay, uh, designs a poster. You can do new page, new page, new page, and you can have group one, group two, etc., etc. And you can flick through between these groups and see different posters or different group work that they're doing. So that's a collaboration space. So for now, we're going to close that and. Just before we actually do, take note that students and teachers can post on this group here. So all of your students can edit, um, and all of your and any teachers on here can edit as well. But remember, it does come up with initials and with names on who posted what. So you don't have to be concerned if other students are deleting work because you can actually see who is doing that. Now we're going to close this for now, and we're going to move on to our content library. And our content library is currently empty. Now there's two ways that we can set up our content library. We can use section groups within a section group, so it keeps dropping down, dropping down, or <coughs> we can use just new sections. 
I prefer to use new sections and then new pages because then you can uh, quickly go between them and don't have a bunch of drop down menus that you end up using. So we're going to use up, we're going to do three sections, okay, and we're going to rename these week, whoop, week one, we could rename this one week two, and rename this one week three. So rather than having to go through drop down menus of drop down menus, we just have our sections here right up to week 10. If you did want to do uh, section groups inside of section groups, you can obviously just re right click uh, and create a new section group and redo that there. But we're not going to worry about that one, uh, we're just going to use our sections here. Okay. So if you open this one up here, Okay, we've got week one, and in, in here is where you can create your new section groups inside. So if you wanted to, you could go um, week one for a section group, and then in there you could do your new pages. But we're not we're not going to stress about that. We're just going to use our sections because I personally find it a lot easier. So we've got week one in as our one of our sections. Now in week one, we can create our different pages. Now because we generally have four lessons in a week, we can name these Lesson 1, Lesson 2, Lesson 3, and Lesson 4. If you have group activities as well, you could uh, create new groups and say Group Activity 1 and link different things in here as well. But that's purely up to you. Again, this is all how you want to customize it yourself. So we've got our week one section and let's say this week in math we're doing area of 2D shapes. So what I did there is I just right clicked, renamed it and gave it a quick title so that when the students see it they can see week one area of 2D shapes and if you drag this out you can see the full version but it just shortens it here. So lesson one. Now we need a few things in these lessons. We need our learning intention and our success criteria our explicit instruction of the skill or the content, we need our practice, our taking it further, and any links to supporting resources. We also need a formative quiz at the end of the lesson, uh, but we'll use that in lesson one just to demonstrate how it works. Now OneNote's a bit funny in that wherever you click, you can just type. So if I wanted to start typing here, I can start typing here and move it around. This can result in a few problems where content jumps around a lot, so it is quite a little bit fiddly. But what we're going to do is we're just going to delete that one here, and we're going to start up the top here. Okay. So in um, our OneNote demos folder that I've already made, we've got a few files here that we need to put on our OneNote for our students. So to start off, we're going to do our learning intent and our six success criteria. Okay, so all I've done is I've just clicked and started typing. Now, uh, funny thing with OneNote is if you keep going on and on and on, it will continually go. Uh, so you do need to hit enter to actually go to a new line, otherwise it will just keep moving on further. So if you want to keep the box to a certain size, just making sure you hit enter every so often. So if we actually open up our PowerPoint, so we have here our learning intent and our success criteria here. Instead of retyping this, I'm just going to copy it for now. Go back to my uh, OneNote, and in here, I'm going to paste it. Now, a little trick here is instead of just pasting it, because if I pasted that, at, if I pasted it at that font, it would be much too big. Okay. Instead of pasting it by just pasting it, usually, I'm going to click on this arrow here, and I'm going to keep text only. And what that does is instead of formatting it the way it did, it just keeps our text. Now I'm going to automatically make these into a list. You can either uh, hit the hyphen or you can highlight it and then just hit one of these buttons here. You can do numbers, you can do um, check boxes is a good idea for success criteria so they can literally see they have to check it off. And we've got our success criteria and our learning intent done which is straight from our TLAT. Okay? Our, next success, our next section that we have to do is an intro. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually make this look a bit neat. So if you go to the draw tab up here, you can draw different shapes. And the best way that I've found to organize the content rather than just have content uh, text boxes everywhere is to draw 
rectangles and squares and have the different uh, content in there. So we're going to do a big one here. Okay, and if you click on it to type on it, it's going to keep bringing up this. So you actually need to click away and then click back in the box and you're going to type in introduction and you could even say five minutes. Okay, so we've got a time and you can uh, highlight this you can make it different colors if you click and drag and highlight it you can make it red, change all the font, do all sorts of stuff to it so we're going to say <coughs> excuse me introduction five minutes and if you hit enter you can give a little bit more instruction so we're going to say um, we're going to get rid of the uh, font settings here get rid of that, turn it back to black and we're going to say um, complete as many multiplication problems as you can in five minutes. So we're giving a clear instruction to the students on what they're supposed to do. Now what we do next is we actually drag in our file. So if we go back to our folder where we had all of our files, you can do this a couple of ways. You can either drag and drop into our section here and it actually inserts the picture. This only works if you've got a picture. If you have files such as a PowerPoint file or a Word file, it will just link the file, which we'll see in a little bit. So I've got a picture, and then I can resize it and make it bigger. So that's the drag and drop method. You can also insert, and then you can go file, print out pictures, video. So you can insert all sorts of stuff here, forms. You can even do equations. So if you're doing math, you can actually insert your equation and do uh, all your stuff here that you need to to show an example. So if I was to do this using the insert way, I would click on insert and I would go pictures from file and we've got our picture here. You can navigate to the folder here, click it and hit open and it'll do the exact same thing. I personally prefer to use the drag and drop method as I find it a bit faster but if you're used to the insert, go for it. Again, this is however you prefer. So we've got our introduction section done and I'm going to actually bold that so that they know it. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to put a little one here so that they know that that is the first activity that they're going to do. Okay. Next up, we're going to do a, another box over here. Let's keep things neat and tidy. And we're going to, uh, again, you have to click away and then click in. Now what happens is, again, because uh, OneNote's a bit funny, sometimes this stuff can get in the way. So what we're going to do is, if I try and click here, I'm actually getting into this text box here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this box here, drag it down a little bit so it's not in the way, again, click out, click back in, and now we're typing in here. Again, this is just OneNote. It's a bit fiddly, but uh, we'll make do. So two. Our next section is our explicit instruction, or the main brunt of the lesson. So we're just going to call this explicit instruction. You can call it main lesson, however you want to. And um, we're going to say, let's say this is uh, 15 minutes, Okay, just as an example. Yours might obviously be different, but we're going to just say 15 minutes. Now what I've done is the main brunt of my instruction is a PowerPoint with some narration in it. So down here, I'm going to put in a bit of instruction. So if you hit enter, it'll go down. It might auto-generate lists. Um, that's okay. If you hit backspace, it'll get rid of that. And we're going to turn off our bold text. And we're going to say, work through the PowerPoint, taking notes where important, and listening to the... And because if we kept typing, it would go outside the box, we're going to hit enter listening to the narrations and it might auto capitalize because it's a new line that's okay you can delete it and retype it and it might fix it up for you but if not that's okay it's just small fiddly things now again you've got two options here you can drag and drop your files in or you can go insert we've already gone over the insert method so instead I'm just going to get my PowerPoint and I'm going to drag it and drop it in here now you've got a few options here. You've got upload to OneDrive and insert link, insert as attachment, or insert as a printout. The most common one, and 99% of the time, you're just going to insert it as attachment. So what that means is it turns up as this little file here in its own little text box, text box, and students can actually download this and access this whenever. 
okay? And again, if you need to make this little box bigger, you can definitely adjust it. Uh, now there's a little tip with moving this one around. Sometimes it clicks into place, and if you have two files next to each other, like I've got here, oh, one second, sorry, they can get a little bit fiddly, as in they might not like being stacked on top of each other. If that happens, you can press Alt and move it around customly, or you can press Shift and it might put it in the same box. But see how it's messing around here? So instead of doing that, I'm just going to hold Alt and I can get it as close as I need to and then I can do that for anything. So again, if you're just holding the box, it might snap into different places, but holding down Alt, Alt and moving it around, you're going to be able to place that wherever you want. We're just going to delete that one for now. So there's two, our explicit instruction. We're going to draw another box for our next section, which is our practice. Okay, and this is where they're going to be doing the main brunt of their work. So again, we're going to click out and then click in here. And we're going to have three, practice. And we're going to say this should take about 10 minutes. Select it again. We're going to make it bold by pressing Control B. Or if you go up to here, you can make it bold here, italics, underline, however you like it. We're just going to leave it as bold. You can even make it a heading. Um, but it's good the way it is, so we're just going to leave it. We're going to hit enter to go to a new line, and we're going to say work through the practice questions when finished, screenshot answers, and post in lesson page, because they might have a lesson page or a working out page. Um, if, you're, if they're not doing it online, you can tell them to take a photo and paste it in. It's quite easy to use because the students can actually get this app on their phone. So that's our textbook there. There's our instruction and our timing. So we're going to get our practice questions, and this is a Word file. And we're going to drag and drop it and insert it as an attachment. Okay, And we're just going to move it into this box here. So what happens is if they actually double-click this, or if they um, right-click and save it, it will actually open it up and so you can see in here we've got all of our practice questions and once they're done they can paste this word file in or they can screenshot it, take a photo of it and upload it so you can check their work. So that's our practice section done. Next we have taking it further or extension. So same deal, we're going to draw another box and once you've drawn all the boxes and given them headings you can just use that as a template and just copy and paste it into each page. So for we're going to say uh, extension, and let's say that uh, some clever students have gone right through all the work, they understand it, and they want a little bit more. So we're going to say uh, we've got an extension activity. Let's say we uh, do a Khan activity, a Khan Academy activity, and we go work through the Khan Academy activity and screenshot answers and post in lesson page. So we want them to post the answers. So the idea of the OneNote is we can always check their answers and always see how they're going. So just for example, we're going to go um, 2D shapes worksheet. I'm sure there's a Khan Academy one somewhere. Um, actually, we'll go, let's say instead of doing 2D shapes, they're doing composite, composite shapes. And we have, nope, there's no Khan Academy one. I'm sure there is one somewhere. Yep, area of composite shapes. And we've got a worksheet here. So again, making use of online resources, there's tons and tons that go around. So we have practice and all sorts of stuff here. So we can actually just copy this link up here. If we click on here, and we can copy it. I'm going to use Control C. And down here, we can paste it, and they can access that. Now let's say they need a little video to help with that. You can go to YouTube and we can type in uh, composite shapes area and we can find a nice little video In this here. lesson. And we can copy this link here and we can also paste that in there. Now again, if it starts going outside the box, that's fine. You can just click the box, drag it, make a little bit bigger. So we've got our introduction, our explicit instruction, our practice, and our extension. And our box isn't quite big enough, so there we go, fix that one up. So we've got all these ones, and then we have our formative quiz. So let's say they have a weekly formative quiz. Let's just insert another shape. Same deal, guys. We go here, click out, click in, five, 
formative quiz and you would obviously do this at the end of the week not at the start and let's just say we have a quizzes on 2D shapes and you can set quizzes as homework and actual quizzes that they can complete so we're going to copy this uh, we're going to paste it in here and we're going to write a little instruction saying complete the quiz is quiz however that's spelt and paste results into um, formative quiz answers because they might have a little tab for that and what you guys have just done is if you just created a, f a format here where you can copy and paste this and just replace um, the files each time so let's say for example you don't use a picture for your introduction that's fine you can delete that on lesson two make it smaller and just insert your file so it's all about saving you time so what I suggest you do is create a template first don't insert any files just introduction explicit practice extension formative quiz and so that way you've got your template so this is the one we just created now this is another one that I've used um, it's sort of the same thing same idea but I've created arrows that go through each of them and uh, assist them even further to just make their way down here. I've also included an instructions tab which you guys can include where we work through the intro activity and then screenshotting answers when it tells them to. So just making it really explicit and really clear on what they have to do. Um, in the next one we're going to look through how to check students answers and how to go through their workbooks. Hopefully this tutorial helped. Uh, thank you for listening.